uh, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of International Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I will be sharing my time today with uh, my colleague, the member for Honoré Mercier. So thank you, Madam Speaker. I am honoured to be able to take this opportunity to speak about the government's middle class tax cut, a tax cut that will provide needed tax relief to 9 million Canadians. First, I'd like to elaborate a moment on our government's ambitious economic agenda that sets Canada on the path of economic growth. No one will be surprised to hear me say that the Canadian economy is going through a difficult period, some regions more than others. There are encouraging signs with our biggest trading partner, the United States, facing an upswing in their economy in 2016. However, there remain concerns that slower growth in certain emerging markets, such as China, has the potential to stifle prosperity. Also, the Bank of Canada revised downward its economic forecast twice over the last 12 months and undertook two rounds of interest rate easing. But in the face of this real challenge, there is a real opportunity to put in place the conditions to create long-term growth, growth that will create good jobs and help our middle class prosper, the lifeblood of our economy. The good news is we were elected on a plan to grow the economy, and we've already started. In December, we introduced the middle class tax cut, and this amendment to the Income Tax Act is what we are here to discuss in the House today. After 10 years of weak growth, our government is redoubling its efforts to ensure that Canada is poised and prepared to compete and succeed in these challenging economic times. But, Madam Speaker, it's clear that we cannot go at it alone. It means that we need collaboration. A key component of our plan is to work closely with provincial and municipal governments to deliver results for Canadians. From infrastructure projects to responsible environmental stewardship, we are providing needed leadership. Our government will work in a renewed spirit of collaboration with our provincial and municipal partners. That work has already begun, with the first minister's meeting held by our prime minister shortly after our government was sworn in, as well as by the finance minister's meeting held just before the Christmas holidays. Our priority is to implement our agenda while pursuing a responsible fiscal plan suited to the challenging economic times. Indeed, we fully intend that our plan for economic growth will benefit all Canadians through targeted investments. Let me reassure you that our government is not daunted by the challenges before us. We are cognizant of our fiscal realities and we know that our plan is more important than ever. We will work together with both the private sector and our provincial and municipal counterparts to advance our shared priorities across a range of fronts. Some of these areas include making targeted investments in public infrastructure that will grow the economy, get Canadians moving, and open up more cost-efficient trade options for our exporters, with a focus on public transit, green infrastructure, and social infrastructure. Working together with all of the provinces and territories for a cleaner environment and to fight climate change, Canada has a plan to invest additional funds each year in clean technology pro producers so they can tackle Canada's most pressing environmental challenges and create more opportunities for Canadian workers. The government will also invest to support innovation and the use of clean technologies in the natural resources sector. Madam Speaker, as our Prime Minister has emphasized, a strong economy and healthy environment go hand in hand. And we are committed to leaving our children and grandchildren with a more sustainable and prosperous country. The government's plan will be realistic, sustainable, prudent and transparent. The plan will also include further details on measures that are intended to steering Canada towards a more prosperous, inclusive, sustainable economic future. Before turning to the contents of Bill C-2, Madam Speaker, I would like to mention that the government's plan will include introducing proposals to create a new Canada Child Benefit. We aim to have payments under the new Canada Child Benefit begin in July 2016. The proposed Canada Child Benefit would simplify and consolidate existing child benefits. It would replace the Universal Child Care Benefit, which is not income tested. The new Canada Child Benefit will be better targeted to those who need it most. Our government will also be working collaboratively to implement the Canada Child Benefit, which will lift hundreds of thousands of Canadian children out of poverty and place them on a surer footing for a brighter future.
We are committed to a strong and growing middle class. Madam Speaker, we want to ensure that all Canadians have a fair and real chance to succeed. The legislation before the House today takes an important first step in this direction. Bill C-2 cuts the tax rate on income earned between $45,000 and $90,000 in 2016 to 20.5% 20 from 22%, and it introduces a new tax rate of 33% on income in excess of $200,000. As of January 1st, the government is putting more money in the pockets of about 9 million Canadians each year through our middle class tax cut. This is the smart and the fair thing to do. Recently, the Minister of Finance and the Parliamentary Secretary travelled across the country asking Canadians directly what our government can do to better support the middle class. They met with Indigenous leaders, business leaders, cultural leaders, all with the intent of putting Canadians' views front and centre and engaging in discussions to find practical solutions to the challenges and opportunities they are facing. These pre-budget consultations continue online. The response rate and comments received have been tremendous. With over 146,000 Canadians reached to date, this has been, Madam Speaker, the largest pre-budget consultation on record. We've heard through these consultations, Canadians confirmed that they want a government that delivers on strengthening the middle class and helping those working hard to join it. The measures in this bill will help strengthen the middle class. That is a priority for the Government of Canada. During the pre-budget consultations, it also became increasingly clear that Canada's economic outlook has changed since the election. This only reaffirmed the government's commitment to the path we were elected to follow. But more importantly, by engaging with Canadians, we have been able to consider new perspectives and refine our plans that will be included in the future federal budget. The government's approach to consultations recognizes that collaboration is essential to delivering real change. The government has committed to and already demonstrated its willingness to listen, engage and collaborate with members from all parties to identify ways to find solutions and avoid escalating conflicts unnecessarily. Given what we have already heard from Canadians and many members of other parties, I look forward to discussing and debating how best to serve Canadians. The tax relief proposal in this legislation will help millions of Canadians. It will give middle-class Canadians more money in their pockets to spend, invest and grow the economy. I encourage all members of this House to vote for this important legislation. Thank you. Merci, Madame. Questions et commentaires?